Hey now everybody, K1 Green Mountain Maniac, not too good of a singer. New build, new project, I've been working on this for a few days, and I think I got it pretty close. This is a four element, I don't know if you can see it really good, four element hybrid Moxon for six meters. Um, uses the good old tried and true driveway markers. You get them at Home Creepo, Home Depot, or Lowe's, or probably any place, any decent hardware store. Uh, those are six-footers, but you only need, uh, I'm not sure how long, uh, what you can get away with. Um, uh, I'm going to be cutting these off uh, here. I'm going to snip them. Make sure if you cut these, because these are fiberglass, put a piece of tape around it and cut it at the tape. Otherwise, it'll splinter. It'll split. Also, do not get that stuff in your skin. That's just pure fiberglass. It's ugly. Fugly, fugly. Anyways, six meter, four element hybrid Moxon. It's tuned. I, I put it on a sight master. Also a field strength meter. Uh, did some testing with it today. And uh, it is uh, about a 1.3 to one over an entire oct, pretty much an octave which is very, it's right in there, what a multi-element Moxon should be. Um, very directional, uh, check the front to back on it, and the RF field with the field strength meter at uh, 50.125, and it's about a 1.3 to 1 on the SWR. Return loss uh, follows gradually. There's not a pronounced dip because it's so broadbanded, I'm assuming. And... Uh, uh, field strength meter. Uh, we're looking at the back of the antenna right now. This is the back uh, right here. Reflector. Got the driver up there at the post. And first director, second director. I'll give you the specs for it. The field strength meter showed uh, roughly 25 to 30 dB. Looks like front to back. Um, very very strong RF field out in the front of it which is a good sign and pretty much almost nothing out back here uh, which is a really good sign and uh, basically took a plywood hub made the hub out of plywood uh, don't pay any attention to this how ugly it is uh, I have to uh, I gotta pop the spreaders out I'm gonna sand this all down and then sand it all down paint it this is a piece of PVC used a spade bit uh, punched out a hole and dropped this in for the mounting point and then I'm gonna be punching a hole through here uh, for a piece of one inch galvanized tubing to slide through and then I'm going to bracket it fasten it on and above that I've got a piece of I believe it's one inch or one and a quarter inch PVC which is going to slip down over that tube. You really don't want any metal in, in the middle of these antennas, Moxons. They don't play well with metal in the middle of them. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to the push-up pole, uh, which is going to be permanently fixed, is going down through the center of this. And it's going to come up about this far. And then I have a piece of PVC which is going to go off and it's going to go up and up to, I'm going to stack the seven element VHF quad on top of it. So we'll see how that goes. But anyways, that's basically the gist of it. Uh, I'll give you the specs here, what I've got. Okay, this on the back side here, this is the reflector and this is the direction of radiation. So this is the first director, second director, reflector, driver. So we've got what I settled on, and just to let you know, I, I, I get the feeling that the Sightmaster is hyper accurate as far as SWR goes, because I checked it on the A57D, and it's virtually unreadable at full power. Uh, there is no SWR reading at full power, so uh, I suspect the Sightmaster is hyper accurate. Okay, we got 83.5 inches, uh, 3.25 inches on the space, that's this right here. This right here, between the driver and the reflector, we've got 17 and three quarter inches 
right here on the reflector coming forward this piece this piece is the driver you want 15 and 3 quarter inches and by the way this is very thin wire this is like 20 or 22 gauge wire uh, spacing between the driver and the first director I have done I have done uh, uh, between the driver and the first director this this is mason twine um, that spacing is 13.66 inches and then this section right here on the driver 10 and a quarter inches right here and then this space right here is eight and three quarter inches right here between the t the first uh, first director and second director. Uh, this last section of the first direction director is nine and one eighth inches, and of course it's 83.5 inches across, and very compact. Uh, so we'll see how we make out. It'll be going up probably. I don't know, this weekend or the end of next week. So maybe this will give you an idea for a nice compact. Uh, I'm anticipating this is going to be extremely durable. Um, a lot of cleanup to do. i got to paint it. Like I said, do the hub and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, feed point, I have an SO239 on it right now, but that's going to be coming off and I'm going to a direct uh, hard connection. Uh, don't like the SO239s uh, for connecting these things if they're going to be permanently mounted. Um, I have a plate made for it, which is going to fasten right onto that pole, that post. Uh, that's it. So uh, we'll do another quick video once it's all wrapped up, cleaned up, and done. And uh, hope to hear you on the bands. And don't be afraid to get out there and, and throw something like this together. Extremely lightweight. Uh, could use it as a portable beam for six meters. And uh, the gain on this, I anticipate, is probably going to be in excess of the three-element quad. Um, I know the 10-meter uh, four-element hybrid Moxon I built was built out of 10-gauge wire, and I would consistently hit people on 70, 75 watts with that antenna as hard as they're hitting me on three-element Yagis with 700 watts. It was an absolute weapon. So hopefully this thing uh, works somewhat similar. I anticipate it will. 7-3. Catch you all later. Thanks for watching.